Hello and welcome to the Thursday, October 17th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Stars Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today I took some time to look over recent SSH usernames and passwords. We got actually Telnet as well. And uh, to look a little bit more into some of the less well-known ones. We all know like the admin admin uh, root root and uh, username password combinations like that. But uh, there are some that look a little bit more random and odd that repeatedly show up sort of in our top 10 list. So I took the time to explain them a little bit. We do get questions ever so often about what these passwords are about. Also try to update our links uh, when you're looking at a particular password page to uh, better explain what these passwords are being used for. If you do see a password, uh, in particular something in the, let's say, top 50 lists or such uh, that uh, you think is odd or would like to know more about, uh, let me know, and I'll try uh, to add a bit more explanation about these passwords to our lists. And CISA released today a document summarizing what uh, they're considering the product security bad practices. This is a document that summarizes some of the issues that CISA has commented on before. Of course, starts out with one of their pet peeve, and that's memory unsafe languages. But uh, other issues we have talked about, uh, like uh, SQL injection, also known passwords, default passwords, and a number of other issues. A good summary, I think, here. Something definitely that developers should be aware of. I think if you're listening to this podcast, you are aware of the issues that are being covered here. There's certainly quite a bit of overlap with lists like, for example, the OWASP Top 10. And talking about hard-coded default credentials, if you are using Kubernetes Image Builder in order to build your VMware images, well, that's exactly the problem happening here. However, in order to exploit the vulnerability, you have to be able to access the virtual machine while it is being built by Image Builder. This apparently is most severe if you're building for Proxmox. Now, one of the reasons people use Kubernetes Image Builder is that it actually works with a variety of virtualization platforms. All of them are apparently vulnerable to at least some extent, just Proxmox appears to be more vulnerable. Not a lot of detail here as to what the exact nature of this vulnerability is or why Proxmox is more vulnerable than the other platforms. And it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody, but the SolarWinds help desk vulnerability is now actively being exploited. Yes, this was a fixed uh, hard-coded credential. The username help desk integration user, the password is a bit more random, but I'll link to a bleeping computer article here that has, I think, sort of a decent summary of uh, what's going on here. And we got sort of a neat little exploit that allows attackers to bypass the no exec flag for partitions in Linux. If you follow many of these sort of hardening guides for Linux, one thing that often comes up is that the certain directories like slash temp should be created as their own partition. And then the partition is being marked as no exec. So attackers are not able to execute code in these directories that are commonly world writable. Many Linux attacks are starting out by downloading a backdoor or something like this into slash temp and then simply executing it. The problem here is that, well, uh, this always has actually been somewhat bypassable. This is just another way how it can be bypassed by an attacker. What's also interesting about this particular uh, vulnerability is, or uh, exploit, I should say, is that it does not actually write to disk. So this would even work with a write-protected partition. It just uses bash to 
pipe code that's being received from a website via curl to memory and then executes it regardless any no exec or even write protect systems being set up for your partitions. Interesting a little bypass, certainly something that pen testers may want to add to their repertoire if you don't already have something similar working for you. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening. Thanks to anybody who is recommending this podcast or mentioning it on social media. And if you're interested in our workshop, the website for it is still up and available. So you can sort of go through it yourself. Uh, SansAPI.com is the website. And if something isn't working, something crashed or such, just let me know and uh, we'll restart it. It's meant sort of to be played and experimented with. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.